Hey guys, this is Ren. This is Casey. And this is All Walks of Film. Woohoo. Yeah. <laughs> Today we're talking about whiplash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally was not planned. Happy accident. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so we just saw it in theaters. Yeah, and um, unlike any of the other podcasts we've done before, we didn't actually talk about the film at all until now. Period. Yeah, we didn't. I, I asked you yes or no, and you said yes, and that's as extensively as we talked about it. Yeah, so let's get into it. Let's get into it. Uh, yes from you, yes from me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from the get-go, we'll get into some other stuff later, but I do want to say, if this movie does not win Best Editing, it will blow my freaking mind. This movie deserves Best Editing. At the very least. It's not going to get best editing. How the hell is it not going to get Boyhood best Boyhood is going to get best editing. <sighs> I'm not agreeing with that. Yeah. But that's I, my no, I, calling. That's I, what they're going to do. Because we've talked about this before of like editing yeah, I, I think you're right, but sound editing, this movie gets it. I sound everything, this needs to get it. Yeah. Um, does this have nomination for best original score? Does it have a nomination? I know we talked about it, but did it? No, because uh, the the piece Whiplash is actually before the movie came out. Like that's another piece. But they wrote so, a lot of pieces like specifically for the movie. Caravan was written for the movie. I I would need to check. I according to the credits, that's what it looked like. Maybe not. Okay. Still. Yeah, sound everything really. I will be fucking pissed. I will be royally fucking pissed if inner motherfucking stellar gets a sound mixing over whiplash. Well, inner stellar's not gonna win sound anything. I don't better it shouldn't be nominated for anything. Yeah, but it well, is interstellar, so interstellar's not gonna get anything. So <sighs> don't worry about that. Cool. So where to start? Where to start on this? <laughs> um So Miles Stellar. Um, I saw him in the Spectacular Now. Um, he is, um, I think they actually picked him because he's like a mini John Cusack. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, when you think of high fidelity, you think of music, you think of John Cusack, you got mini John Cusack in this movie. I thought that was funny. All right. He's cuter I, than John Cusack, though. I, I always I bring up admit, the looks. I always bring up looks, but his scars were like really cute. I liked it. I gotta admit, I've never seen high fidelity. Oh, that's right. You haven't. Uh, John Cusack and Jack Black work in a music store. Okay. That's not the one with the music box? That's Say Anything, which you should watch. The, okay. Say Anything surprised me. I was not expecting that movie. Like, it sounds so corny. And the only thing people talk about is John Cusack outside with the boom box. I know, but that's totally not what the movie was about. Okay. Well, I'll check out Say Anything Totally other well. movie. Uh, in a nutshell, my little blurb for Whiplash is this is a sports movie, but without sports and without all the tropes of sports movies. So it's a much better sports movie than any sports movie. He is a fucking athlete in this movie. He is. Like, the the training, the perseverance, the drive, no. all that stuff, really, it's, it's about the training. It's about the getting there, like any sports movie, but so much better than any sports movie. I don't know. For me, it was Full Metal Jacket with drums. Well, of course, you you think that J.K. Simmons. Well, J. Yeah, J.K. Simmons is doing the Arlie. <laughs> he, he's doing Arlie the Hammer. thing. Yeah. yeah, I did a little salute. I'm just because they can't see me. That's why yeah. I said that. I did a little salute thing. <laughs> yeah, but I, I like it so much better than any sports movie. <laughs> oh man, this is a movie that just makes you feel like shit about yourself, though, in a good way. Why? Because you're not pushing yourself hard enough? Yeah, that's what it's all about. Like, it's simultaneously cautionary tale and you need to get your shit together and do something kind of movie. Like, dude. It's hard not to feel inadequate when watching this movie, man. I don't know about you. That was an experience I had. Yeah. Not as an indictment on the movie in any way. No, I, I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, this was a movie that just made me, like, want to, like, hulk up. Like, hulk up! I, like, rip the world apart in a good way. All right, so, um... This movie totally we... made me cry. I'm not even... Totally made me cry. 
Before we get into uh, any more, I do want to give a heavy spoiler alert. We're going to spoil oh, the yeah, entire yeah. movie. So Totally spoil the entire movie. So uh, don't listen to this unless also, you've seen the movie or unless you are one of those people that don't mind. So. Well, here's the thing. There is stuff to spoil in this movie. Oh, yeah. It's a there, total spoiler. Well, movie. this seems... I don't know. If, if, I was listen, if I was listening to it, this might be a movie where it'd be like, oh, whatever, spoilers. I'm sure it doesn't matter. This is a movie that can be... It doesn't seem like it, but it is. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a straightforward like music movie like right. they normally make. Well, here's the thing. It's about jazz. like And not experimental jazz. Um, to explain... It's, it's, it's hard to explain. Most music movies are about rock or punk. Where, like... It's all about content and substance over, um, you know, actual execution. They picked, I think they, they specifically picked jazz because that is the most difficult stuff to actually pull off. Not experimental jazz, but actually like straightforward jazz. Um, there, there's a scene in the movie where the, where some football player is like, oh, but isn't music all subjective? Like, how do you even know that you qualify for something and mini john cusack is saying no miles teller is his name miles teller yeah miles teller says no it's not subjective no it's because technique wise that's the most grueling genre of music yeah and uh props up for props up everybody. for everybody <laughs> yeah props up for everybody but also getting a guy that miles teller looked pathetic in this movie like there was there was uh there was that, um, like, kind of loserly, you know, kind of baby face chub that he had. Yeah. Like, he looked, he looked more like a regular person. And I, I'm kind of happy that we got this music film with a, somebody who's not ripped. Somebody who, you know. <laughs> what, what does being ripped have to do with anything? Just no, regular, your point. like <laughs> yeah, but regular Hollywood actors like have a certain body type, yeah. and like oftentimes I call bullshit. No, but they actually had that guy in the movie. He was the asshole. Yeah, but I'm saying the main <laughs> the main character is tone for no fucking reason. No, but I'm saying they did have that character. He was right. Just, he was the I'm, asshole dude. I'm saying, <laughs> but usually. They would have that character, but the main character would be Tone for no fucking reason. No, I, I got you, but I'm saying, yeah. like, they had the smarmy Hollywood good-looking guy. Yeah. <laughs> um. <sighs> Oof. So, I'm going to call it right now. I think J.K. Simmons has the win. I'd, Unfortunately, I think... He's very good. I think he has the win. I don't quite think he deserves it. Right, because he does do a lot of yelling and... He's House the Musician. And House is a musician, by the way. He is a jazz musician. <laughs> so you, it's not even a He's a little bit more Arlie Hammer, but you would need to... No, he is, but he's like Arlie Hammer meets House. Like, when he walked in the very first time, in that very first scene, I was like, God, he really reminds me of somebody. I don't know who. And it wasn't Arlie Hammer. I was just like... And after a while, I was like, Oh! He's house without a cane. Okay, well, this isn't the... And this is not this an isn't... indictment on J.K. Simmons. It's yeah. the character. That's the character. That's it. <laughs> not that it's not still fantastic. But Miles Teller was far, way, way above J.K. Simmons. Like, that's what I think, personally. You look confused. You're mulling it over. I'm I'm processing it right now. Give me a fucking second. Well, the audience can't see your face. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm saying just give me a second. Okay. Uh, yeah, Miles Teller blew me away in this movie. And part of it is because he's not a very likable guy. Even though everybody in the movie theater identified with him. And that's not a bad thing. Right. Well, Miles Teller, Miles Teller, based on the films that I've seen, has never played like a. I've never seen him before. Okay, so there's a movie called The Spectacular Now, and he's in it with. Um, 
Shane Woodley, I think is her name. Uh, she's in the Divergent movies. <laughs> Anyways, it's about this kid who's like an alcoholic and he's like, just doesn't know what to do with his yeah. life. No, but I'm saying like he, um, we're in, we're in an age now where emotional problems, like emotional issues like anxiety and anger are becoming a lot more talked about, a lot more noticed and a lot more like just in communities, like just sort of vocalized more than ever before. And his anger issue was so believable to me. It was not a good thing in his character. I'm, I'm not saying not a good thing in the writing, but I'm saying like that is a personality flaw and a fucking huge one. And that's part of what made him like feel so much like a real person. Yeah. Was the and that takes a lot of skill for me to really believe that, because J.K. Simmons was so angry, but he was also very controlling, and he like that was a character and. Miles Teller's character, Andrew, was people I know. Like, the, it, was, it was so strong, and it kind of hurt. It kind of hurt looking at his character a lot of the movie. And, again, that's a, a positive thing. That's, like, a big bonus to the movie for making his character actually physically hurt my chest. Like, for real. My heart hurt a lot of this movie. I was just like, shit! Because his character was kind of stressing me out, but in a really good way. So, it's funny that you say that because uh, I related to a lot of um, yeah. Miles Teller's uh, character. And uh, right now I'm going to say it. I, I had a job. Um, people listening to this probably know. Um, I had a boss. His name was Caesar. Fuck you, Caesar. By the way, um, that's all I'm gonna say uh, because saying any more would give details and yeah, that's okay. Fuck you, Caesar. Yeah. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's like it was. It was yeah. so raw. It wasn't pretty. Yeah. It was really fucking ugly. But yeah. it was raw. And it was. It felt so real. Yeah. I'm not saying it wasn't real. That's the no, kind of shit I mean, that, like, actor's heart is out of reality. I feel. I don't know anything about his process with this, but if yeah. I had to make a guess, if it had to have come from somewhere real for him, because that was so, like, it was it was deathly. And that's what I'm saying, like, it's kind of a cautionary yeah. tale in that way. Of, like, you need the ambition, you need the drive, you need to go out there and get what you want, but you can't kill yourself for it. Right. But and the movie is exhausting. It's exhausting. I, I didn't say a word for, like, how long after we saw that movie. No. Like, I didn't even want to talk. I was just like... <sighs> but um, this movie, it, it was really interesting. And part of the reason why this feels a lot more realistic than most movies is at a point, he does all the right things and he kills himself and he fucks it up. He murders himself and it doesn't work out for him. And then at one point in the movie, and this might be the most controversial thing I say, one point in the movie, he does all the wrong things. Like, really wrong things. And it totally works out for him, presumably. Uh, the ending scene. The ending drum scene. He did, like, every wrong choice. And it worked out for him. That's the way it goes sometimes. Well, and it, I'm not even saying it's based on luck. It's all circumstance. Well, I saw... Um, I saw the film as sort of this, let me backtrack a little bit. Okay. Um, I saw the film, uh, the character that J.K. Simmons play, mm -hmm. um, there are teacher types like that. Like House. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's, That's the last time I'll say that. Let's stop with the Hugh Laurie references. It's going to drive I'm gonna, me crazy. No, I, I'm saying that's the last one. Yeah, but because like, House is reminder. a fucking pussy compared to this guy. That's true. He was way yeah. better than House. Yeah. Like, how, House was a lot nicer, even in his meanness, <laughs> compared to this guy. And, like, this guy was a horrible teacher. I'm going to say it. He was a horrible fucking teacher. Mm -hmm. And... 
I I guarantee people are going to be people are going to come out of this movie and go like, yeah, that teacher did the right thing. No, no he, didn't. he did not. That was a horrible teacher, and you know, the guy, uh, Miles Teller's victory was partly because he was able to fight through it, mm -hmm. but in no way, shape, or form was that a good teacher. Like, I cannot yeah. say that that was a good teacher at all. And I, I'm glad that he got him fired. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I'm saying where, like, the wrong choices still ended up with a good outcome, even when the right choices ended up with failure. Yeah. Well, I mean, everybody has to fail. Yeah. It, like, any successful person has to feel failure. Like, utter failure at one point. Right, and that's kind of what his character, I think, was trying to say in the yeah. Charlie Par Parker. It's Charlie Parker, isn't it? Oh, not that Charlie was his Park? Name? Yeah, I think it's okay. Charlie Parker. Um, and not yeah. Charlie Park. But that's what he was trying to say, is Charlie Parker failed. And then from that, he succeeded, and that's kind of where he was, what he was kind of trying to say with that whole moral. Um, Sean Casey, a uh, strongest character who was never on screen, never had a line. <laughs> I mean, good God, they put yeah. a lot into that character. And again, it felt re very real. Yeah, when, see, that's one of the things that I, I think you're, I think you're writing off J.K. Simmons' performance a little too much, and it was that scene. Oh, no, I wasn't trying to, I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to say he was bad. Yeah. He was fantastic. He wasn't the best supporting actor well, of well, the year. Well, to me. That's all I'm saying. To me, the scenes, the scenes where he was reserved was the, were the scenes that really, uh, that really, no, uh, he, showed yeah. his acting ability. I agree 100%. And he he deserves the nomination. But I don't think he was best supporting Who actor. do you think's better? Who do you <laughs> think's better? So you say he doesn't deserve it. Tell me right now. Tell me right now who you think is better at best supporting actor. <laughs> oh, God. Supporting actor. Not actor. No, best supporting actor. I called you out. No, You gotta funny. give me an answer. <laughs> I know he's not... And it has to be somebody who was nominated. nominated. No, I know. <laughs> Even Because the person I think was... Who was much better, I know wasn't nominated, was Kova from Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I know that doesn't qualify, but off the top of my head, that was the first thing I thought of. I thought Kova was better. We, we need to have but, a separate category for CG actors. Do we? Do we really? Yeah. With... With specifically Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Do we really? The reason why is because you give too much credit to a CGI actor, the animators are going to bitch. And that's what's happened with No, that's true. Circus. And the animation department is fantastic. But here's the thing about the actors in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which I know this is a little bit of a tangent. But the thing is, is that I am as motivated and as emotionally invested when I see them in in real life in their gray jumpsuits as I am when I see the animation. I don't think like, oh, that looks silly. Oh, that's a human being. I don't even see it. I really don't. And it's not just Andy Serkis. Really, the whole cast is that fantastic that I, I don't even see human. Yeah. When they, like, it's like a whole fucking transformation. Like, yeah. So what, do you think Ethan Hawke was better? <laughs> Oh, uh, Ethan Hawke, I, I, Ethan Hawke was also fantastic. He put a lot of personal stuff into the movie. I will be pissed if he wins over J.K. Simmons. Wasn't that uh, good? Because <laughs> Ethan Hawke kind of was just Ethan Hawke in yeah. the movie. Yeah, he was. And I mean, Patricia like, Arquette was fantastic, but yeah. Ethan Hawke was pretty much just... Ethan Hawke did yeah. put a lot of personal touches into that movie, though. Yeah, he did. And, and he did also deserves the nomination. He was really good in that movie, but better than Jacob Simmons, no way. No way. Yeah. So, who's the better actor? Oh, I don't want to say, because you're going to totally... Oh, you're going to rip it apart. Yeah, I'm going to rip it apart, so give me. <laughs> give me it. Shit. 
What? You don't know the actors? No, I know. Oh my god. So I gotta look this up because she she doesn't have this. No, so I know. She's like, I don't think it's the best supporting actor of the no, year. No, I know. But, but but I don't even know who it's competing against. No, I do know. I have somebody in mind. And I don't want to say. Go ahead and say it. No, I, don't, I really don't want to say it. Go ahead and say Moving it. Moving on. Up right now. No, no, we are staying on this. No. We are staying on this. Oh my god, the audience is bored to tears. Can we move on? Yeah, we can just fucking edit this out. <laughs> are you really stuck? Alright, so. Go ahead and tell us. No, I'm not gonna tell you. It's Ed Stop Norton. Stop it. Ed Norton from Birdman. So, Ed Norton was By basically. a little bit. Ed Norton wasn't really acting. I mean, he was, but like, that's what. Well, because that's like, what Edward Norton does in real life. Yeah, and plus, like, he was. You're you're telling me an undie fight in it's Birdman. It's not like I'm gonna be disappointed when J.K. Simmons wins Best Supporting Actor. It's okay. still gonna be great when he wins Best Supporting Actor. I'm not saying that he wasn't fantastic, and I'm not saying that when he wins, I'm not gonna be genuinely happy in my heart. It's not my pick, but it's deserved. Okay? Okay. Okay. So moving on at long last, <laughs> can we fucking move on? Yeah, we can move on. Can we move on? Okay. Um, like I said before, jazz is really the most difficult shit to pull off. It is. Technique-wise, it really is. And that's what this movie was all about, was technique. And that was fascinating. I tend to lean more towards experimental jazz and the kind of stuff I listen to mostly, but in terms of jazz, I mean, I, I just tend to prefer it a little bit more. But that's an entirely different culture. That's not the culture of this movie where it's right. high stakes. And also, and also I, I'm going to say right now, not into jazz. Totally was into this movie. Though. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah. Even if you're not into into jazz. Yeah, this is a movie that yeah. transcends music. That's why I said it's not a music movie. Yeah. It's nothing like music movies. It's nothing like sports movies either, even though that's what I compared it to. But this is something I feel like... I don't know. It's more like a thriller to me because like, I, I was at the edge of my seat. Because no fucking sports movie gets me at the edge of the seat like that. I'm sorry. Like, oh, the big game? Yeah, no, it's not what, my that's thing. That's why I said it was like a sports movie without yeah. any of the tropes of a sports movie. Yeah, because like in a sports movie, like... Like so much oh, better. Oh, we have like this big game and then they either win or lose. And if they lose, it's a victory. If they win, you know, but it's... Have no, you ever seen a, Have you ever seen a sports movie where they lose and you feel the pain of the loss? No, that's why I said it, it's beyond a sports movie. Yeah. But... Um, you're not a musician. You're not into jazz. I'm not a musician. I know some stuff. I can read music. I do have a very good ear for music. Yeah. I do, and part of it is because I, I have studied the history of music fairly intensely, and I do listen to a lot of different stuff, a lot of very eclectic stuff. I do have a very good ear. And something I loved about this movie was as talented as these musicians were, they were able to sound like shit at some points. There were some points where J.K. Simmons was like railing on them and I was like, damn right! They fucked it up! Because <laughs> yeah. like I said, jazz, the re part of the reason why the technique is so important is because when you mess up, you hear it. In an instant. Yeah. Rock music and punk music are not like that. They're built around, like, at their core, and jazz was like well, this initially but, when it first started, but, but nowadays it's, not not really. But jazz and punk are all about taking that down and sort of like disassembling what music is. And that's cool, but that's not what this kind of jazz is. But at the same time, a rock band or a punk band doesn't have the formality that but that's, this classroom stuff has. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's why it's like so high stakes. 
I mean, the only thing that I could see being this high stakes would be classical music. Exactly, like that would be the other contender is classical music, but yeah. jazz music is not like classical music. And by classical music, I would probably see it being more like opera because opera is the only mm, opera is the only intense. thing that I I can think of that is even close to as intense at, Actually, as this sort of thing. Yeah. Speaking of, props to this movie for not having any singing. No singing. Why would they? Exactly, why would they? But that's something that American audiences can gravitate more to. They can, like, kind of wrap their heads around singing better. Yeah. Because there is sort of this fascination with singing when it comes to especially, like, pop music. You know, American Idol, The Voice, that sort of thing. Yeah. And musicals and Let It Go and everything like that. That's something that people can kind of grasp more on. So if you ever incorporated... Well, you couldn't call it the jazz singing. <laughs> you couldn't do that. But props up for not doing it. They never pandered to anybody. They no. never really stuck to a formula. Except for one thing with J.K. Simmons' character. Not about the actor, but about the writing. They did kind of Severus Snape him up a little bit. Okay. But, um, <laughs> they did, where like he's this evil character, but in the end, he all ha he always had good intentions. I don't think he did. You can interpret it that way, or you could not. I think he recognizes a musician in the end. Yeah. Somebody, like a competent musician. But I... Yeah, I can't compare him. Yeah. Um... He was, again, much better than Severus Snape, but <laughs> much, 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 much better. So, um... I, I did like Miles Teller better. He's not nominated, even. Yeah, he is. He is. Okay, thank God. I was gonna say, like, between him and Jake Gyllenhaal, fuck. For best actor, main actor. That's what okay. I'm saying. But he, he did get nominated. That's good. I totally don't remember nominations right now. I know I did a whole podcast and I totally don't even remember. Sorry. I just lost my train of thought. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> and it's like Snowpiercer where when the train stops you get eaten by a polar bear. <laughs> spoiler alert! <laughs> we said spoiler alert! Yeah, but not for Snowpiercer. <laughs> we'll We're edit it out. out. Um, so, also another props up, because seriously. Oh. No, because seriously. Thank God for having, this isn't the only movie, but it's one of the very select few. Single dad who actually does good. Because here's the thing, in my, one of my film classes this week, we were reading scripts, we read like ten scripts, and we were joking in our class every time there was a character of dad. We were like, well, we know who the villain is. We know who the bad guy is. It's the dad. It's always the dad. You know, it's like Disney syndrome, where, like, you just can't have a dad who's not villainous or, like, abusive or something. Or incompetent. Or totally incompetent. And there are movies that do have really good single dads, like Pursuit of Happiness, District 9, um, the, the Road. Like, they do exist, but they're so few and far between. So props up for having, like, the only actually, like, solid, goody-goody, two-shoes kind of character actually be a single dad. Like, yeah. that was great. Like, that, that's not putting that character down at all, but he was a very supportive, loving dad who was always there for him. Always. Even though he barely talked, he was always there. You know, I, I thought that was positive. Also, props up for making a movie about the biggest joke in a band. The drummer. Yes. Really? I'm not aware Most, of this. Most... Have you ever heard the joke? What's the joke? Okay. What's um, the joke? <laughs> who's the guy who hangs out with four mu musicians? The drummer. Are you serious? Yeah. Um, Fuck so, that! I'm sorry, I love drums. I, I love drums. What I'm saying is... Oh, 
fuck? When it that? comes when it comes to music, oh. the drummer is almost always the person who is put on the wayside. I know why you're saying this. I actually know specifically why you're saying this. I'm gonna call you out on this a little bit. Okay, go. You like prog rock, primarily, and I'm not defaulting you on that. But in prog rock, yeah, the drummers are a joke. But here's the thing, <laughs> Blink-182, the most famous person in the band, is the drummer. No, but uh, there are exceptions. There's all obviously always exceptions. But I'm yeah. saying, in general, as a genre in prog rock, the drummer is a joke. No. Most of the time, the drummers can't do more than just like the same two or three beats no. every single song. I'm hey, sorry, it's a I'll, truth. I'll admit it. I like Green Day. Three chords, three chords, three chords. It's, yeah, that's how it is, but with drummers. I get it. I don't really listen to a lot of prog rock. I'm not saying I don't enjoy it. I'm not saying there's anything bad about it because, you know, I do have nostalgic memories for prog rock. My, when I was growing up, my dad really liked prog rock. We were on road trips. We would listen to it a lot. I would like that. But I listen to a lot of other stuff where I dig the drummer and the drummer's the, like, boom. Yeah, I... I don't know, drum, drummers just never have done it for me, but props up for this movie because yeah. now it will actually get me to pay more attention to drummers, which... See, I'm not like... I, I'm not, I I'm not giving drums. an indictment to drummers. I'm giving a praise to the movie for recognizing an art that I did not appreciate in a level that I can now appreciate it in. Yeah, and another reason why is because you've told me before you don't go to a lot of live shows. And part of the magic of drumming that I feel like this movie really captured is when you go to a live concert and they have the amps up all the way, what right. you feel reverberating in your entire body, like your heart starts beating to the actual beat of the drummer. That's well, just like, boom, boom, boom. Part of my, and part of my that, problem, too... that feeling came across very well in this part movie. Part of my problem, too, is most of the live concerts that I've been to were like amateur bands. Which, mm. which doesn't give you a great outlook on music when, you know, people are like, hey, music's awesome, and then all you see is amateur bands. Yeah. Yeah, granted, <laughs> that, that's normally what I can afford. I mm -hmm. mean, I've been to classical concerts, and I've been to opera, so I like that, but, you know, I do need to invest and myself more in various kinds of music, but see it live so that I can appreciate it a little bit more. Yeah. I'm sorry. I will admit that music is not my thing. Mm. Um, and that's okay. But... That's fine. But there is an appreciation for it. The main reason why music isn't my thing is I usually find myself being attracted to things that I feel that I'm good at or I feel that I, I'm in tune with. Mm -hmm. When I don't know a lot about something, I get a little cautious about... Yeah, and saying that I like it or something. Yeah, and that's that's not a bad thing, and I think a, most people do feel that way about yeah. certain things. But um, just as a little context, oh, I know that band. The band doesn't exist. <laughs> did you see the? They did this. Uh, they did this joke with hipsters. Um, they went to Burning Man and like asked a whole bunch of people if they knew uh, like this random band. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And they were like, oh, yeah, you know, I listened to them, like, back when it was made of. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, as a little bit of context for me, I'm from Austin, the city of live music, supposedly. Yeah. Now, they're not extraordinarily serious, like New York Jazz Band in Lincoln Square, or, like, even jazz in New Orleans. But, you know, I did go to a lot of live concerts. I did experience a lot of different types of music. So, the... The drummer thing is something I mostly get from experiencing so many live concerts in person. But mostly when I listen to music, I'm listening to that drum beat. I like I do feel a real affinity for it, specifically. So, um, and it's one of those things that like in every kind of music around the world, it has such a prominence. So I did like the fact that this was about a jazz drummer. I honestly don't know how much I would have liked it if it was about a jazz saxophonist as sexy as that might be saxophone's nice i like a saxophone but you couldn't have the intense scenes of like making his fingers bleed you don't get that shit with with saxophones or trumpets you get that with drummers fuck yeah like for real 
Uh, there's this dude in the band uh, X Japan. The, the drummer supposedly is like so amazing that he can't even drum with his shirt on because there's like no room for it, whatever. And I kind of, I'm like, dude, I can name like well, five drummers up. Seriously. Well, no. Miles Teller in this, Miles Teller <laughs> so in this movie was uh, like, I can't. Part of me wanted to know how much he actually did. It looked as though he did a lot. And from the credits, I didn't see anybody credited. Okay. With doing the, I, 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 I'm, just, I'm not sure. I'm just Don't saying I'm throwing a little skepticality just because like, he's an actor first and foremost. And some of the stuff that he was supposedly doing mm -hmm. would blow my mind if the actor was completely responsible for yeah. that. It, it felt very real, though. Yeah. I mean, um, he's not... He's, so if he didn't do most of that... Yeah. I'm not saying he did all of it, but if he didn't do most of that, like, wow, that was convincing. Yeah. I mean, uh, who's it? Steve Martin plays the ukulele or something? I have Yeah, he's like a world-class... Really? Wow. ...musician. Like, yeah. Yeah, Steve, Steve Martin, more than, uh, more than comedy... Is a musician. Like a uh, world renowned musician. Johnny Depp's like that too. I'm throwing that out there because I'm really pissed at Johnny Depp right now, acting wise. But originally, he was a musician. And not a singer either. Oh, yeah? Yeah, not a singer. Why doesn't he play music in any of his movies? I know, right? I, I haven't. I haven't heard his actual band, so I'm sorry. But he does talk often about how. He started out as a musician. That's his real passion in life, yeah. is music. And I'm kind of like, what the fuck are you doing acting? I think it's one of those things that he kind of just got roped into initially for money, but then he got really famous. Yeah. And then it just was like what he did. He, I, so, I think he still is in a band. So right now, I'm, I'm going to call out Jared Leto. You are a much better actor than fucking 50 Seconds to Mars. Stick with acting 50 Seconds to Mars sucks. Or We're going to get a little sidetrack from the movie. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> Just saying. So, I mean, there are people like that. Um, please don't hate me, you or internet. I'm just throwing <laughs> this out there. Justin Bieber was originally a drummer. Much talented drummer than singer. And he's not even that talented of a drummer, but he was better at that than singing. He somehow got roped into singing. You know, that's just what kind of catches on for some people. Unfortunately, music is one of those things that... It's one of the most difficult things to really make a living off of. Yeah. Certain people can do it. And most people really, really struggle doing it. Yeah. And it's it sucks. Because you see all these fucking talentless hacks in pop who are making so much money off of nothing. Off of well, bullshit. That's... It's not even talent. And you have and now what musicians you're addressing, out there. Now who... what you're addressing is why J.K. Simmons was so adamant about his music mm -hmm. yes Th that was his fuel that was his anger all these talentless musicians that are famous and none of them really have the type of talent yeah it's yeah. just it's it's so shitty that like our our music industry the people who are famous who get the most spotlight and this is not everybody i'm not saying that there aren't talented people in pop because there certainly are but it really fucking sucks that people are making so much money out of being talentless when there are real musicians out there well, who half are the time, amazing and have drive half the time and they are get wonderful more credit. to like half people the time are interested they, in. Half the time they get more credit because their uh, performance, like their performances versus their music. Like the only you're talking about Lady Gaga, aren't you? No, I'm not. Oh, okay, I'm talking about like tons of people. That's you know, um, but then you have people like I don't even know his name, but No Flex Zone. I'm in love with the Coca dude. Where it's like, what? What is that even? Or like Miley Cyrus. I'm sorry, we can't in, stop. It's not only, even a song. The only Ugh. the only rap that the only rap that you can get now that's true is like, you know, from you know the grungiest part of Chicago or you know Detroit or something like that. In, yeah. in these little neighborhoods. And even still, you have to weed out a lot of bullshit just to get something that's true and 
meaningful versus bitches, hoes, money, shit. Yeah. Um, and by the way, just because you mentioned Detroit, I'm going to do a little product placement right here. Check out Detroit versus Everybody. Actually, really cool, really interesting cause. Just check it out online. Really awesome. Um, I can go into that later because it's not really about the movie, but just check them out. They're cool. Yeah. Um, and well, this problem with po the pop industry is that that's what makes money. That's what people want, and it's it's a little sad. But really, that's what people want. That's what people like. That's what people pay money for. People don't pay money or as much money for really good music, and it's sad because that's why it's so difficult. Because being a musician costs money. It does. Yeah. And it's just depressing. <laughs> it's really depressing. Yeah. Well, I mean, being an artist, and I period. Give, yeah. And I give like, props to The Voice for actually hiring... Like, they mostly really have really talented people. Instead of, like, the American Idol, where all they're really interested in is what makes a pop idol rather than actual talent. The Voice is all about talent, first and foremost. And they do offer record deals and money to musicians who don't win. Which is great. Like, things like that are good. But there's not enough. There's not enough stuff like what we saw in this movie where I, real I feel drive pumped. actually I feel off. pumped, partly. After seeing this movie? Yeah. Like, Part of it's, it's the a, score. Part of it is that music. Yeah. Really. I think I might get the soundtrack. I want. Story. I'm getting the soundtrack a hundred percent. I'm. Okay. I'm finding it tonight and I'm buying it. I'm not even kidding. Okay. Like really, just mm, so good. Yeah, so and good. so the performances were great. Um, Here's the thing, <laughs> Miles Teller, J.K. Simmons, yes. Yes, absolutely, 100%. Yes, 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 yes. The dad? Yeah, kind of. Nobody else in this movie was given the light of day in terms of the script or yeah. in terms of acting. There was well, no I, room for I like, And that I was okay. Like that. Here's the reason why that was totally fine. There was not a single moment in this movie that you could miss out on. There was no busy moment. I and went to the bathroom once and I missed something. Yeah, and it was yeah. fantastic what you missed. <laughs> Even though that was probably the best part of the movie for you to miss. That was like the least yeah. important part. And yet it and was like, that good. The there last was part of the movie the there last part of the movie, I held it in. It sucked. I held it in. I was like No, but the, the <laughs> But I didn't no, want to leave. It, yeah. it like this This is an edge of your seat thriller. Yeah. But there were there were no superfluous moments in any part of this movie. And how long was the movie? It wasn't even that long. I what, think it's the, like 110 minutes or something. Wait, wait, we we went into the movie. I think the movie actually started the around like 7:55. Yeah, the movie like started eight. at eight. We were out of there at 9:50. Okay, so yeah. So the movie isn't that long. It's not that long, but I praise it for not having to push the two two and a half hour mark just because it's an epic movie and actually only having important moments. And you yeah. do miss out on a lot of things. You miss out on. Um, most especially, you miss out on the entire um, legal process when Miles tell Andrew when Andrew decides to file charges against well, or to testify against. Um, I don't even know J.K. Simmons' character name. I oh, don't. Oh God, either. what's his name? I don't know. And he was just that asshole in the movie. Like really, not not really. Uh, oh oh, it's it's almost mm, Fitcher, Fitcher. His name is something Fetcher. I got so I got so wrapped up in the story that I didn't pay attention to the, like characters' names and stuff. It yeah. was just like it was just Andrew struggling, Andrew struggling, Neiman. struggling Andrew artist Fetcher. versus asshole teacher <laughs> for me. Oh my god! Um, not Connor, but the other dude was such an asshole. Hey man, can you borrow your sticks? Fucking asshole! You know why he did that, right? Shitty that was friend. all... No, that was all a fucking test for him. Like, that whole thing was... J.K. Simmons? Yeah. Yes. No, no, no. I know that. But that character... You... They already set that character up as an asshole anyway. It's not like yeah. J.K. Simmons met with him in private and was like, Hey, can you be like a sh Like, this really crappy asshole to this guy and putting him through a test. 
That yeah. dude was an asshole anyway. Like, he was. Also, um, the there was a... Wait, 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 wait. There was a brilliant moment in this movie that I loved. And it was a moment. That's it. That really showed social loneliness. Without oh, you're being talking overdramatic. about the very beginning? Yeah. It was towards the very beginning. And um, I remember it because that that asshole dude who went pre-med was in the scene. Um, it was a great... It was a great moment because it wasn't over dramatic and it wasn't just like wallowing, but it was it was very the effective. leprechaun guy that uh, whose name is probably Flannery. Did you miss that part? Because he like went on talking about like how he was like a fucking leprechaun and shit. No, I, I remember that scene, but the part <laughs> that I'm talking about is towards the beginning um, when when Andrew first goes into a band practice you see very little moments of intimacy. And, yeah, it's the asshole dude and his girlfriend at first, but then it's the asshole dude talking to a buddy. Yeah. You know, he's not exactly jealous. It's not quite what it is, because he says a few times in the movie, like, he chooses to be alone. This is all he cares about. This is his drive. Yeah, but there is this moment right at the beginning that shows what he's missing. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, this dude and that dude was the original drummer. He was the core drummer in the first band that he was in. So he was the core drummer who also had time for a girlfriend, who also had time for friends, and had the lead part. And, um, you know, Andrew was kind of left in the dark. He didn't have friends. He didn't have a girlfriend. And he also didn't have that position he wanted. He wasn't the core drummer. You know, and it was a really beautiful moment where you kind of see everything he lost out on for something he didn't even have. Yeah. And that's that's what made it really satisfying also, when he looked up immediately. Also, there, there was no getting the girl in this movie. <laughs> yeah, the girl was in, like, what, four scenes total. Um, yeah. One scene to establish kind of, like, what their relationship was before, the asking out scene, the dating scene. You don't see anything from their relationship except for exactly one text message and then the dumping scene. And that was it. She was not even in yeah, the movie. Yeah, and then, then she's <laughs> like... Oh, I have a boyfriend, which... Oh, that's is, right, there was the phone call. That's yeah, five. That's five. Which, which is something that more movies should fucking do, because that's what fucking happens in real that's life. That's such a, like, that's such a lousy move, though. So, um, okay, yeah. I'll do your thing, but I have to check with my boyfriend first. Yeah, Instead of but, saying, oh, I can't do your thing, I'm okay, dating somebody. Okay, 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 shout out to all the guys. You've experienced this once, I guarantee it. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was, but, um, yeah, the girls aren't important. One thing I'm going to say, I'm going to be devil's advocate. I think I'm going to get both sides hating on me for this, and that's fine, because whatever. Um, no black people, no women, as primary characters, because there's only two main characters, and they're both white males, and it didn't matter. Like, I'm sorry, but yes, that's true. This is another movie where it's about two white dudes and their issues. And especially when you're talking about jazz music, two white dudes. But I don't think, like, this is one of those movies where, like, that, that doesn't even affect the movie. Like, right. really, because, that's not what it's because, about. Because, to be fair, it's majority not about of white the band, male problems. You know what I mean? That's the not majority, what it is. The majority of the band was African American. Yeah, but they, they weren't characters, they weren't people, they right. were just fill in. And especially in that last scene, that's really all anybody was in that last scene. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, if you did write it... Was, well, it, was it, the one person that got into a car accident African American? Or we don't know. Wait, are you talking about Sean Casey? Yeah. We have no idea. He was never on screen. We never saw a photograph. I'm we never heard he a line of dialogue. We don't know. We have no okay. idea. It doesn't matter. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, okay, yeah, you could say... Well, you could have made one of those characters a woman, or you could have made one of those people black. Yeah. Or you could have done any of those things. Well, and remember the have, scene? Go it ahead. It wouldn't have changed anything. That's true. But yeah, it wouldn't have changed anything. Like, it's one of those movies where it transcends a music movie, it transcends a sports movie, an athlete movie, a white male problem movie. That's totally not what it's about. This is a movie that, like, people really need to see to realize that they do need a passion. And that's really where the girlfriend comes in. She's one of those, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. 
I'm not really studying anything. I'm not really happy where I am. I'm not going towards anything. I'm just sort of floating along. And this movie, the reason why she is so expendable, it's not because she's a woman. It's not because she's a girlfriend. It's because she's the slacker. This movie has no fucking patience for slackers. Yeah. Really, no room for that. No, you will fall behind. You will get left behind because you're just a hindrance. And I'm not saying this to criticize real people in real life. Really, no. But I'm saying this is a movie people need to see to really feel this message of you need something. You need to be working for something. Yeah. Because I feel like that is kind of a cultural issue that our generation has. We don't really know what we're doing. We need to figure it out. And I know it's not that easy. Way easier said than done. I totally understand that. I, I Do will say that. I will say that. I will say that. Going on that, I know this is straying away from the movie a little bit, but going on that, you don't always have to push forward. Sometimes you just have to survive, and that's yes. a lot. That's, and the character did that in yeah. many aspects, and I think we forget that. Because we get so focused on the pushing forward that we forget that sometimes, sometimes all you got to do is go through the fucking motions. No, that's that's what I was saying yeah. initially about this movie is all is simultaneously in a perfect balancing act that feels very realistic. A movie about pushing yourself and a move and a cautionary tale. It's both pro and con ambition. Yeah. You need the ambition and you need the drive to go anywhere. But you can't let that kill you. I you love, can't let it kill you the way that it did in this movie. Yeah. I love the fucking ending, though. Everybody did, and I... Hmm. I loved the it. The part where no, no, he no, was drumming, and he was like, Fuck you! And yeah, then he, he was an animal. Yeah. I, I love the ending, but it's not for the same reason that people in the mo- our movie theater love that ending. Because we, you know, every time he did this, he made a decision, our audience went, Woo! And like, fuck that guy! Not, not Andrew, but the teacher. You know, they were all laughing that he was an asshole, and they were all like, Woo! Andrew! Whatever! Yay! 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 And that's, that's a totally okay way to interpret it. But for me, every time they woo, I was just like, you dumbass, that was the wrong decision. But that's what I was saying about how he makes the wrong decision and it works out for him. And he makes the right decision and it doesn't work for him. That's just the way life is sometimes. Yeah, remember the scene where he's like... um, And I'm not criticizing the movie for that. He didn't... I'm not saying he needed to be punished for making the the wrong decision. What was it? The recital or the contest? That was the most... That was the most tense moment because he... Wait, wait, wait. The bus, the bus oh, went down. Oh, the car down, crash. Yeah, that was... And then the car crash. That yeah. was, um, that was qualifiers. Yeah. Um, uh, that's not the technical term for it. And he but comes in all fucked up and you know... He had a broken finger and he was covered in blood. Yeah. Because you see later he has a cast on his finger. He broke his finger and he was still drumming. That's why he kept dropping his drumstick was his finger was broken. Yeah. Like... Mm. Like that is drive, but that's also killing yourself. Yeah, like and then he just fucking lunges at the teacher. Yeah, after that because he's like, "You're fucking out." And Talk he's about like, wrong bullshit. Decision. Yeah, yeah, and then it was like, "Oh, that's fuck. why you can't push yourself too hard." This is probably the first movie that we went to the theater that we had the aud- we had a great audience. That, um, I mean, you can say what you will, but we had an audience that was invested in the fucking movie versus... That's true. Yeah. There was no... Yeah, we didn't hear any, like, uh, superfluous noises. We didn't hear people, uh, except for at one point, we didn't really hear people talking out of context or, like, describing the movie except for one time. But for the most part, people were very... Yeah. The lady the next to me was like... Whoosh. <laughs> like the whole time, it was kind of. Wait, funny. you mean me? Because I was doing that. I was oh, like, you were doing it too. It because... might have been me that you were hearing because I really was like that. Where I was just like, <sighs> well, there, there. So I guess I had twice. Because, <laughs> like every scene, it was just like, <sighs> yeah. <sighs> it was an extremely <laughs> tense movie and yeah. very well done. Um, I only had one small criticism of the movie from a technical standpoint. There were a few shots that were so close, I didn't even know what we were looking at. Um, for example, there was one where the first time you see his hand bleeding when he's practicing, and he tries to put the band-aid on it, I didn't know what part of his hand it was. 
and then they fine. show it that's, again. That's ambiguous. Like, yeah, it was a couple spaces. things. It's it was like, like nothing. It was not even pff, whatever. And and the edits in this film are so rapid. Well, no, no. Here's the thing. That was one scene. I love the fact that they only had like this montage rapid cut from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing. Only when they built you up for it the whole movie and they earned the right to really get that stylistic. Before that, every musical scene was only about the music. And I love that. They, That's not they true. fought for that. That's not true because like in many scenes there was... I'm not talking about the editing. I'm really talking about like the, the stuff they showed in the rapid fire. And... Because even if Boyhood wins editing, this movie had fan. Fantastic editing. Not only do you have to, not only do you have to edit for, um, you know, edit stylistically, but you have to like match the, you yeah, know, you match the music and all that kind of stuff. And I was just watching the movie, going like, I just bravo to the fucking editor, right? But like I, that was that was, I mean, as much as I fucking love this movie. The editor is where I throw my accolades to in this movie, just capturing all of these scenes, mm -hmm. um, but what you know, with the sound and everything like that. Oh my right. god! Like I can't even imagine how hard of a process mm -hmm. editing this movie would yeah. be. And going off of that, I appreciate the fact that they did have very good editing. But it was almost like it was like invisible editing in a very good way, a very positive way for most of the really tense musical scenes where everything sort of matched up and, and it was very narrative. And then in the final, you had shots of the sheet music, you had shots from all different perspectives in the scene, you had uh, the only instance where the camera switched without an edit from subject to subject to subject to subject in, in the shot where they were showing... Andrew versus uh, Fletcher versus Andrew versus Fletcher versus Andrew versus Fletcher. And I, I feel like that really a, paid off. I don't think there's fantastic. a single shot in the movie that lasts even a minute. I don't I don't think there's a single shot. I like this movie had some of the most rapid editing that I've ever seen. No, but I'm saying they had rapid editing and it didn't feel like it had rapid editing. Right. Well I'm that's, that that's like, part, part of the sound design too. No, it, yes, but I'm saying like even right. in the non-musical scenes, that's true. But it didn't feel S sound design. Pardon me, I'm not saying this to be perf. I'm not saying this as a pun, but you didn't get whiplash from the editing until that very last scene. Right. Like it was done so. Even though it was rapid fire, it was so precise and fluid that I didn't even notice until that last scene where it really paid off to be able to do something more stylistic with it. All right, that's props what I'm up saying. to the sound design. Yes. Yeah. Sound design, editing, fan freaking fantastic cinematography, absolutely, yeah. absolutely fantastic. Um, Miles Teller really blew my mind. Yeah, like really blew my mind. He was, and I'm not just saying that because I thought he was kind of cute. Well, this was he the was Sundance very good. Winner, yeah, that. that's true. So, yeah, know, I saw that in it, the credits. It did, it did get its accolade there. Um, the Oscars are going to be a lot tougher. Yeah. That's true. And um, I'm just going to say right now, I feel nothing but pissed at the Oscars this year. Well, and this is and after many think, years of building up. I don't, I don't think like it's going to win but... as much just because... Um, just because... Interstellar is... was so brilliant. No. <laughs> no. Boyhood Boyhood, and Birdman are going, going to fucking steal the show. No, that's no, my... no, that's true. It's just... Um, there are certain movies... And I'm not only talking about Interstellar here. There are certain movies where I'm like, there's no room for you at the Oscars. Like, you shouldn't even be here. And there are certain things that have just, that aren't represented, period. Or barely represented that need to be there. So this year, I'm just, I'm solely pissed at the Oscars. Oh, yeah. First opportunity to get a black woman. Oh, we can't do that. A black so, woman huh? director? Yeah. Yes. You said black woman, sorry, sorry. and I didn't know who you were talking about. Sorry, yeah, black yes. woman director, yeah. Oh, we can't do that. Yeah. You know why I'm going to say they didn't do enough stuff for Selma? Like, why, my reasoning for why they didn't do more stuff for Selma? What? Too subtle. It only talked about a specific moment in time. It didn't have all the flashy moments. Yeah, they like weren't the able to get wants. the rights for the I Have a Dream speech. Basically, you know. every reason I love that movie 
is probably why the Oscars hates it. I'm not saying that to sound hipstery, I'm just saying that the subtleness of it is probably why. Yeah. It's not lifetime movie enough for them. I'm gonna say it, I don't even care. I'm pissed at them because I found out the reason why the Lego movie wasn't nominated is because the 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 chairs of the Oscars actually said we didn't watch any of the animated movies. Not all of them, but most of them. I think it was like seven of them said that they didn't see any of the animated movies. Like, that's your job. Your one and only job is to watch movies and you can't do it? Are you serious? You can't watch, and not even all movies, just the ones that are nominated. You, you like, couldn't have really? asked. You couldn't ask people, like, hey, what were the good animated movies? Like, Well, what? apparently a lot of people, when it comes to animated movies, just go off of, oh, well, my kids told me that this movie was really good, so I'll throw that one in there. Your one and only job is to watch movies. But how, how hard they, is that? But how would they do that, and they, they got, like, the fucking Song of the Sea and Princess Kaguya? Princess Kaguya? I'm sure kids saw that. But also, uh, Princess Kaguya was Studio Ghibli. Like, yeah. it's one of those things where like Disney, Disney Pixar, Pixar Studio, Studio Ghibli Ghibli. slash Hayao Miyazaki are always going to be on Ghibli, the list. Not no. Ghibli. Oh shoot! I didn't. I meant to say Ghibli. I'm sorry. My bad. Um, always are going to be on there, no matter what it is. Like that, it's part of the politics. They're always going to be on the list. And you have the Lego Movie, which is a fantastic animated movie, not from any studio that the Oscars just automatically goes to. Therefore, yeah. not even on the list. Nightcrawler? Oh, that's kind of weird and creepy. Not even on the list. Gone Girl? Too violent. Not even on the list. Like, just... Whoa. No! Yeah. There's so much anger. At least Whiplash has nominations. That's good. Yeah. Well, stay... At least this isn't too freaking over their heads. Alright, well, stay tuned to us. Um, we might not give you a podcast right after because we'll have to edit it but um yeah, just put it up as is yeah but make yeah we'll, me for my Edward Norton we'll put it fine. we'll put it on Podomatic first um and then we'll um then we'll edit it down and put it on um uh, YouTube uh but we will do our Oscars um oh that I thought you were talking about this one no 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 we should put this one up right away like even on YouTube we should just go ahead and post it right away and then post it later with pictures Okay. Yeah. I feel very strongly about this movie. I'm not, it's like, seriously, this movie made me cry. This movie made me speechless. This movie physically hurt my body. Yeah. Um, and it's because, I mean, <sighs> people struggle to find what it is that they want to do in life. And I understand that. The, yeah. That's, that's sort of talked about in this movie, but not really. People do kind of have to figure out what works for them and, and what it is. But when you, when you pursue anything... I've had a very hard time recently trying to pursue what I want to do because I tend to have a more positive outlook on things and like you have to keep going and you have to keep moving and I've had a year that broke that for me. Like my spirit was broken this year, really. And it's been very difficult for me to cope with and I saw this movie and I just was like, I... It was exactly the right time for me to see this movie, I guess, because this was a movie that kind of, it, it made me feel like that, but it also made me feel like, but it, it really did renew my sense of striving towards something. And it's not because he's pushing himself so hard. It's because it's a lesson. He does the wrong thing and he does the right thing multiple times throughout the whole movie. And it just shows you that even when you fuck up, you have to just, you have to, you have to, there's, that's what you need to do. And I, I, I think it's really good that he did fuck up as badly and as often as he did in not a cliche way. And like, you're kind of a crappy person kind of way, Yeah. but he still, it didn't matter. Well, and going off of that, uh, going at another angle, there are certain people that are horrible people that you have to in some way not let them bring you down yeah. and that's J.K. Simmons you know a lot of people might see him as this 
inspirational, you know, oh, he pushed this character. No, J.K. Simmons was a dick, through in and throughout. Um, what he was doing wasn't good at all. <laughs> and the fact that Miles Teller could survive it, mm -hmm. you know, proves the strength of his character. He didn't have to survive that kind of ordeal. He already had the fucking talent. Yeah. And, like I said, he does make the wrong choices yeah. because of that influence. But... Yeah. It's, it's it's hard to describe, like, the very specific thing I got out of this movie. Yeah. But um, I feel like this is a movie that... If you're not a music person, you need to see this movie. If you're not right. a sports person or an athlete, you need to see this movie. Right. Like, this and is, like, an actual... This is one of those movies that actually has a less... Like, not that it has a moral. Not that yeah. it's trying to push something on you or that it's trying to, like, get some sort of thing. But it's, it is a life lesson. It's one of right. those talks that people need to sit down and have with themselves on film. But... What I got from it, you you got that you need to push yourself harder. What I got, not necessarily. That's well, not it. But you the have main to thing, keep moving. The main thing that I got out of the movie was never let anybody else bring you down. Mm -hmm. You know, never let anybody else, <laughs> even even if it's in an education, uh, even if it's in an education thing where somebody's like, oh, not good enough, not good enough. You know, oh, you fucking suck. If your friends tell you you suck. If, you know, you have all this kind of stuff. There are circumstances where you might really like something that you're not talented in. And that, that does happen. Yeah. Um, Sean Casey. Yeah. But at the same time, never let somebody bring your fucking spirit down. Yeah. You know. And we, we saw... Both, because people will bring your spirit down, but, you know, and I'm not saying that, you know, that won't happen to you. What I'm saying is that can never be a permanent thing. Yeah. And I think between the two of us, what I'm trying to say when I say it's like a life lesson is, and that everybody really should see this movie, is this movie deals with so many things. So beautifully and fluidly, it doesn't feel busy, but it does tap into so many issues that pertain to so many people that I got something out of it, you got something out of it. If we had a third person here, they would get something else out of it. Because there is so much to get from the movie. Yeah. Well, this has been All Walks of Film. Mm -hmm. Play your fucking heart out. <laughs>